In today's video, I'm going to take you through the fundamentals of setting up your website on SiteGround. I'm going to take you through the key stages. So we're going to take a look at purchasing your hosting, registering your domain, setting up an SSL certificate and installing WordPress ready for you to start building your website. Once you've got to that point, if you want to learn more, there are plenty of videos on this channel where you can take a look at building an entire blog, website or e-commerce website. I'll put a link to those in the description below so you can carry on your learning and build the website you've always dreamed of. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Test, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If you'd like to learn more, consider hitting that subscribe button and smashing the bell icon and becoming part of the WP crew to be notified every time we release new content every single week. Okay, so let's take a look at SiteGround now and let's take a look at the process of doing everything we've just said. So looking at the shared hosting options for SiteGround, you can see we've got a range of different options available to us. We're going to be choosing the WordPress hosting for this particular example, but obviously you can choose any other one you want and the process is pretty much identical. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a managed WordPress hosting, click on get started and that's going to take us through then to the next stage of purchasing this. As you can see, we've got a range of different options available. We've got Startup, Grow Big and Go Geek. Each one of these has the basic same options available. The only thing that really changes is the things like the amount of web space that you've got, the number of websites you want to host and the number of monthly visits. So if you are starting off a new website, the startup should be more than enough. But if you think you want to sort of use the Grow Big or Go Geek, if you want to have more websites and more space, by all means, choose those. You can always upgrade to these later on down the line, whichever one you choose. So we're going to choose the basic startup plan for this example. And we're going to say, get the plan. That's going to take us through to the next stage now, which is where we can either choose to register a new domain if it's available, or we can use a domain we already own. Now for this video, I'm going to show you how to do this with a new domain because chances are most of you are going to be in the position where you want to register your domain and your hosting at the same time. However, like I say, if you've already got a domain, you can simply choose already have a domain and then you can move on to the next stage. So let's take a look if the domain that I want to use for this example is available. So we're going to go with WP Pro website and we want the .com. So we're going to choose that. You can see it tells us the domain registration is £14.34 per year. Now I've set this up so all of my prices are showing VAT. So as long as I know that, I know exactly what I'm going to be paying. Click on proceed. That's going to then check to see if that domain is available. And if it is, we can then proceed on to the next stage. As you can see, my domain is available. So now I'm at the point where I can review and complete my order. Now I've already got an account with SiteGround, but I'm going to take you through this anyway, just so you can see exactly what you need to do if you're new to this particular service. Just simply drop in your email address, create a password and confirm your password. Then go through and put in your information, your name, your country. If you have a tax or VAT ID, drop that in there. Then you have the payment options where you can go through and insert your card details so you can make your payment. And then finally, you've got the purchase information, which is going to go through and show you all the things that you've chosen and some additional options you can choose if you want to. So as you can see at the moment, we've got the hosting service is the startup plan. The data center is in the nearest country to me. So let's say in the UK, so that's perfectly fine. We've then got the period in how long we actually want to purchase this for. Now, 12 months gives us one of the best prices. You can see that gives us the overall bill of £35.40, excluding VAT. However, if you set that to one month, you can see it'll change. You've got a 295 sort of trial fee and then a £9.60 setup fee. And if you go up to 36 months, you can see that'll give us the price of £106. So we're going to go for 12 months. We're going to leave it at that. Then you have the option for extra services. So you've got domain registration, which we chose because we want to have our own custom domain in there. That tells us how much that is. And if we want to add in anything like domain privacy or SG site scanner. Now the domain privacy, if you're dealing with the .com, this just stops anybody seeing the information that you put in there when you actually register this domain and should then help stop you having annoying spam calls when your domain information gets out there. You can choose that if you want to, and that is £9 per year in this example, plus VAT. And then you've got the SiteGround Site Scanner, which will just is a monitoring service that just checks your website daily and notifies you if there's any problems being hacked or injected with malicious code and so on. If you want peace of mind, select that, tells you the price, and you can move forward. And then finally, at the bottom, it gives you all the information about your order, your total, what you have. And then you can go through and say you can confirm that and you'd like to receive SiteGround special offers if you want to have that as well. Now, SiteGround regularly run special discount offers 
So I'd recommend taking a look at the description below and every time that's updated, I'll try to keep that up to date with any special offers that are available and applicable so you can save yourself even a small amount of money. It's always a saving. So don't forget to check out the description just to see if there's any offers currently available for you. Now I'm going to go ahead, insert my details and create my new order and then finish paying. And then we'll move on to the next stage where we can start taking a look at what's on offer inside the SiteGround dashboard. And there we go. My order was successfully submitted. And as you can see, now we can jump over and proceed to the customer area, which point we can then take a look at all the services, take a look at the domain and we can start activating things like WordPress, SSL certificates and all those kinds of good things. So let's just proceed to the customer area. That's going to ask us to log in. And there we go. We're now into our SiteGround dashboard. Now, if you purchase a SiteGround sort of hosting plan, a little while back, you probably would see a different interface. This this is their latest version. Older accounts are going to be migrated over to this newer version. So you may see a little difference if you've got an older account, but just bear with it because it will update and pretty much all the things we're going to do are pretty much exactly the same. So don't worry too much about that. Now, before we start working on building our website, let's take a quick tour of the SiteGround interface. If we come up to the top, you can see home is where we currently are. And if you're new to this interface, I'd recommend taking a look at the tour of the SiteGround account. It'll take you through in this little video, introduce you to all the different facilities and tools that are available. If we go to the website section and open that up, you can see we've got websites. You can see this is the domain that we purchased. If we click on the link to the right hand side, we can go and take a look at that tells us what plan we're using. And again, we can click to find out more information. If you want to add additional sites, we can do that. And depending upon the plan that you have, you may have the ability to go through and add new sites to that same plan, or you may need to purchase another plan to add another site in. Then we've got collaborations and you can see we have no collaboration set up at the moment. This is where we can sort of collaborate with other people on a website. Now we're not currently collaborating with anybody, so nothing will be listed there, but if we were, we'd see them all listed at this point. We've got the services tab. You can see there's our startup plan. That's the hosting plan we currently have. If we want to upgrade that, like I said earlier on, we can click upgrade and then choose what our new plan is going to be. If we want to come in and manage that. We can come in and we can manage the details. You can see we've got the startup plan, what domain is on there, statistics for our site and so on. So because we have a certain number of sort of visits we can have a month, the amount of space, we can click on the statistics and go and take a look at what's currently being used. Now, obviously, we've got a new plan, so there's next and nothing's going to be shown in there. So as your site gets moving forward and you start to build the site and so on, you will see information in there. And it's good to check on that just to make sure you're up to date with what's going on. If we come over then to domains, we can take a look at any domains we currently have purchased and associate with our site. So you can see we have our WPProWebsite.com. It's currently waiting for us to verify that we own this domain using the email account that we set up. So let's just do that right now. We should have received an email to the registered email account that allows me to go through, just verify that. So I'm going to open my email software up. I'm going to take a look and there we go. There's the email address that's come in. So it's coming in saying, dear customer, you recently registered so-and-so domain. We need you to confirm that you are the actual registered owner and this is the right email address. We then have to click on the approve link. Once you've done that, that will approve the domain. Now, obviously, if you just transferred the domain into your SiteGround account, you wouldn't have had to do this. But if you purchase it as part of your hosting plan, then just confirm it by using this simple option. Let me go. Please verify your accounts. There's all the information. So I'm going to click verify. Once that's done, it now tells me, thank you very much. You've now verified that you own this domain. And we are now ready to go back into our control panel for SiteGround. Now, even though we've verified our domain following the link in that email, we come back to the domain section under the services inside SiteGround. If we refresh this, we'll find that the verification required will still probably be there. And the reason being is because it can take you 24 to 48 hours for this to be updated with the relevant sort of account. So don't worry too much about that. Come back in a day or two and you should find that's gone as long as you've confirmed everything. If not, obviously then you want to resend the email and follow that again if you need to. Okay, so there's the basics. We've gone through, we've seen the account we've got, we've seen the domain, we've confirmed it's our domain and so on. If you get any other emails coming through to you from SiteGround, read them carefully, make sure there's anything you need to do, you follow through with it to make sure that everything is completed and up to date. Obviously, if you are unsure of anything, then reach out to SiteGround and just ask them for any help you may need. So there's all the stuff we needed to do to get SiteGround set up. We purchased our hosting, our domain, confirmed it, all those kinds of things. Now let's get on to the fun part. Let's start by setting up our site. So we're gonna click on set up site from the home section in the site ground dashboard. Now click on there, that's gonna go through then and allow us to do a few different things. We can choose to start a new website or if we've already got a website, we can migrate our site. 
Now, obviously, if we didn't want to do either of those, we could just log into our control panel and start and do whatever we kind of wanted to do. But this video is all about WordPress and we're going to create a new website. If we want to skip it, though, you could say skip and create an empty site. However, we're going to say start a new website. So we're going to click on select. That's going to open up all the options we now have for creating and starting up a site. So we've got WordPress, WordPress and WooCommerce, Weebly Site Builder and other ones. We're only interested in WordPress at this point, but if you were wanted to install WordPress and WooCommerce at the same time, you can choose that option. However, we're going to click on select for WordPress. Then we're going to go through and say, what's the installation details? What's the email address you want to associate with this account? And what's the password you want to use? I'm going to fill those details in a moment and then we'll move on. So we'll simply drop in the email address and we'll generate a new password. That'll set it up as nice and strong. So what you can do is if you want to, you can click on the little eye icon, then you can copy that. Obviously, make sure you put this information somewhere safe so you can log in once you set everything up. Now we've done that, let's click on continue. That will then go through the process and allow us to go and choose some other options. Do we want to add in the site scanner, which if you remember back to the beginning when we purchased our hosting account and everything, we had the option for site scanner there and also for the domain privacy. So you can see again, if you didn't do it at that point, but you think I'd like to do it now, you can add that in at this point. I'm going to leave those out. Like I say, this is just a demonstration, but if you think that they're worthwhile to you, add those to your website for peace of mind. Click on finish, and that's going to go through the process now of creating our site. Now, depending upon how busy the SiteGround server is, this could take up to two minutes to complete the website creation. So we're going to let this go through the process and we'll come back and then we'll move on to the next stage. So now that's complete, we can simply choose access WordPress admin. We'll come back and take a look at the go to site tools a little later. Let's just jump over to the dashboard of WordPress. So now we've logged into the dashboard, we can, if we want to start this wizard, or we can exit this and go straight into WordPress itself. We're going to ignore this. We're going to click on exit and take us into the dashboard itself for our WordPress website. So you can see there's a couple of things we need to do. We've got a range of different things on here that is to do with the way that SiteGround actually set this up and the little wizard that's installed. So you don't need to keep this in here. If you want to, you can remove those completely. You can see we've got WordPress starter is available. So if we want to use that, we can click on start now and that'll then take us back to that sort of wizard where we can go through this. So if we close that by accident, we can go back in and start working through it. However, let's exit back out of that again. And let's just take a look at what we have. Now, this is a slightly different dashboard because this is configured to work inside SiteGround itself. So this is slightly different to what you'd expect to see in a normal WordPress install. However, we come over to the plugin section and go into install plugins. We can see what's been added in there. As you can see, we've got the SG optimizer, which is the SiteGround optimizer and the WordPress starter. If you don't want those, you can simply select those and just deactivate them and then delete them from there. And what that'll do is it'll take us back into a very vanilla version of WordPress. So let's just delete those and click on OK. That'll get rid of those. And if we now go back to the dashboard, we should now see that we're back into the normal WordPress dashboard that you'd expect to see when you install WordPress as normal. Now, choosing the site tools will give us a whole different range of options inside the SiteGround interface itself. You can see we've got some basic options available, and this kind of replaces what they used to have, which was the C panel, which is the control panel you kind of get with a lot of hosting companies. So this is a lot more user friendly, a lot more focused on making it simple and straightforward. However, pretty much all the tools are still in there should you need them. First thing you can do, you can come in and you can change for any domains. If you've got multiple domains, you can go in there. You also got an option then for things like WordPress and so on. So we take a quick look over there. You can see we've got some basic information, some statistics and so on. Like I say, new site, no information. But as your site starts to populate with information and visitors arrive, you'll start to be able to track all this information yourself. You can set up an email account if you want to. You've got a sort of file manager, the app manager, where you can go in and install WordPress again or any of those other options we had earlier on, like WordPress and WooCommerce or any of those kinds of things. So you could get rid of any WordPress copy and then just add a new fresh copy in directly using this. If we come over to security, and at the security settings, we've got SSL manager. And this is where we can make sure that we've got an SSL certificate. Now, if you're not sure what an SSL certificate is, it just stands for secure socket layer. And all that really means is that every time any data is transmitted from your website, that could be something like someone sends you an email from a contact form right the way through to making purchases with WooCommerce. That information is encrypted, providing you have an SSL certificate on your site. One of the nice things about SiteGround is that you automatically get an SSL certificate as part of the actual plan itself. And as you can see, we've got the Manage SSL section at the bottom. It tells us this is the domain, this is the certificate we've got. 
it's active and it expires on. We've also got options then if we click and you can see we've got a view certificate, we can delete it, we can renew it, or we can enforce HTTPS. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to enforce HTTPS and you can see in there we can choose to enforce it and external link rewrite. So if we enforce that, you can see that's now enforcing it for our domain. If we want external link rewrites, we can also do that as well. So you click on there and activate both of those options should you want to. They've now been activated. So if we come back over to our site and refresh, we'll now see that we get the little padlock telling us that the site is now secure and therefore we're using HTTPS. And we want to double check to make sure everything is in place. If we come to the settings and we come down to general, we'll find now that both the WordPress address and the site address are now set up to HTTPS. So everything is nice and secure, all set up for us directly inside the SiteGround dashboard. And that's how we go about setting up a SiteGround hosting account, tying in a domain to it, installing WordPress, making sure our SSL certificate is set up and all of those other things are now in place, ready for us to start building any kind of website we want with WordPress. Now, if you want to learn more about the SiteGround dashboard and the update, let me know in the comment section below and I can take a look at creating some content that will go through in a lot more detail all the various different options that are available to you inside the new dashboard. So there we go. That's how we go through the process of setting up everything inside SiteGround. You're now at the point where your WordPress website is ready to go and you're ready to start building. And when you want to learn more, consider taking a look at the videos you can see on screen right now. They're going to get you up to speed on building a WordPress website, whether that's e-commerce, whether it's a typical website for your business or yourself, or just a blog to help you spread the word. All those things have been covered in detail. As always, all the applicable links for everything we've covered are in the description below. And if you want to get a nice saving on SiteGround, consider using that discount code that's going to be in the description. Well, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tutson. Until next time, take care.